broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Well, last podcast before the convention. Woo! It's going to be a fun one. Yeah, I hope so. That's hope probably so. going to be a, oh, it's going to be a fun convention. I'm looking forward to the convention. I think we're going to have a blast. Yeah, I just man, it's so far away. That's such a long yeah, drive. Yeah, I'm dreading the drive. In fact, I went and got the got the car all ready for the trip today before I came here to meet you. So yeah. so we can have a have a safe trip there and back. <laughs> um, if we took my my car, we might roll over three hundred thousand miles. Ooh, <laughs> you know I videotaped that last time when I did that. No, the the last time they rolled two hundred okay. before it got totaled. And yeah. yeah, I did a video. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I think I think when I got mine, it was at two hundred and forty or something like yeah. that. So yeah. well, I rolled the the white Honda, the one I had before, the one that got totaled. Mm -hmm. I had two hundred and ninety seven thousand on it. I yeah. didn't get to roll three hundred, and then I got rid of it before it rolled three hundred. Uh, I was kind of disappointing. I kind of wanted to do the three hundred, but yeah, the um, the Honda that I had way back when it was my it was my first car that was my car. Um, I, I, th I think I had to get rid of it. At, well, I had to sell it cause it was a, it, it was not a like, good car. <laughs> well, no, it was a good car. It was oh, a great yeah. car. It was just like, it, it wasn't worth putting the money into it to make uh, it, to keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it had 292,000 miles on it. So I didn't yeah. get to see 300 in that one either, but I, it had 177 when I got it. So I did see 200, but I wasn't that excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, two hundred is not as exciting as three hundred. And I wanted to like there was a big debate in my house of whether I was going to get a new car mm -hmm. or put a bunch of money into that car and keep rolling it yeah. because I could have like that car could have done another hundred thousand. Yeah. I would have had to put some money in it though. Like it wouldn't have just done it, but but it could have done it. I'm having to put money into mine pretty regularly at this point, so it's yeah. you know that's and, the that's and it's the foreign price. car, like it's a German car, so everything's expensive. <laughs> it's not cheap. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it occurred to me, uh, like, I don't, I don't guess it, I can't remember if it was the last podcast or the one before, um, but uh, Biden had his, his, you know, required presidential action of uh, launching missiles at somebody. Yeah. And we talked about it before, before the podcast we and did. we said, um, <laughs> uh, we, well, we definitely need to talk about this. And then we never mentioned it again once we hit record. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, that. Happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for those that are unaware, um, you know, Biden did his requisite uh, bomb, you know, foreign country um, yeah. over n nothing specific, really, yeah. or or uh, at least a a, um, a flawed line of reasoning, we can say. And let and let me tell you, you never seem more presidential. <laughs> right. Right. That's that's always how it goes. Like, I wonder if it was old Biden in there that made that decision. Oh, I don't um, think Biden's making any decisions, <laughs> They're man. just, like, snapping their fingers in front of his face and, like, just say yes, say yes. You know? <laughs> right. Um, I well, don't know. It is That is what scares me more about Biden than anything. At least mm -hmm. Trump, I knew Trump was making the decisions for himself. Like, there wasn't nobody, like, I mean, they're bullying making, Trump around. Yeah, they weren't yeah. like bullying. They may have been manipulating him. Oh, but yeah, he, definitely. Yeah, but they weren't bullying him. Yeah. Like with Biden, he's not making any of these decisions. He mm -hmm. barely knows what's going on. There's a reason the man hadn't had like a legit press conference since he took office. Yeah. Or since he in the campaign ever. Like, I don't, I mean, when was the last time yeah. he had he, well, a he legit? Didn't, he didn't really campaign either. Well, that's <laughs> like, what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I mean, even in the campaigns, like he wasn't doing press conferences. When is the last time this man had a press conference i mean he's been on tv yeah but not... i mean he, he's had press conferences but they were all prepared statements and he yeah. didn't take any questions well yeah that's not yeah that's not a press conference though. yeah to I me agree. i mean no i, I agree I, yeah. and the media is starting to agree with you there's yeah. there's some pushback there's about there this now some, some i mean and it's not like I, yeah, I heard somebody saying it's not like they're giving him tough questions either it's like uh when will we see the first white house feline and uh yeah you know, right? like, things well, like this Oh yeah, tough stuff. Really, really hard hitting questions. But they know that he can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's the reason he hasn't done it is yeah. because it's gonna that's gonna be tough for him. Well, there's been a few moments where at the end of some, you know, something on camera that he was doing, um, press has tried to get him to answer questions, yeah. and he just looks lost. Yeah. And then his handlers shoo the press out, or you know, yeah. grab him and lead him away, or well, he's whatever. usually so. I've seen one or two where he was like. Looking for his wife, like, <laughs> like, like, what do I do now? Like, yeah. Yeah. well, and he can't even get through even the prepared speeches. He, he yeah. messes things up and he's just reading off a teleprompter. Yeah. 
Exactly. And this is a career politician, so this mm-hmm. is like second nature should be second nature for him. Yeah. Like and that's, the, that's probably the only reason he's able to get through it at all is well, because yeah. it is this is second nature to him. He's done it all his life. Um, interesting thing is that uh, with the prepared speeches, they um, the they provide a transcript. Yeah. Um, but they <laughs> what they're doing on at least some of them mm-hmm. is um, they are. Uh, it's a transcript of what he said, but when he screws something up, they also put in what what was in the script. Oh wow! <laughs> um, and I don't, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's um, strange. Now sometimes they just put out the script instead of what was actually said, and if you listen, there's like slight differences. A little bit, yeah. You know, but there are things where he's saying something else (laughs) and they're, yeah. And they're putting in, and so they're still wanting to get their message out. Like it's not his message. I'm pretty sure it's, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, that's interesting, but back to him being presidential and, um, dropping, you know, dropping bombs, dropping bombs on Syria. (laughs) Most presidential act you can make. (laughs) Yeah. Um, the, I mean, just the, I I don't want to spend a lot of time with it because it's kind of old news now, but, um, you have to marvel, at the idea that, um, <laughs> so we claim to have been backed or, or been attacked by Iranian backed Shiite militias in Iraq. And so we attacked Iranian backed Shiite militia in Syria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that we so, could send a message to Iran. Right. <laughs> I, yeah. I just I don't know the whole things, yeah. and it's just like when um, when Trump did the same thing. There's not I mean they they're blaming Kataib Hezbollah, um, but there's no real evidence of that. I mean it's in in fact in Iraq it's more likely to be Sunni militias than yeah. than Shiite militias. Shiites are in control. We did that. Yeah, right. Yeah, we put them there. Yeah. Um, so. But you know there's not enough people in the U.S. that know the difference. Yeah. You know, know who's who's um, you know, whose oh. shirts and whose skins over there like well you ask your average person they don't know. And and I'm not And super... our government doesn't either cuz we keep changing sides. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, cuz in um I don't remember sp- the specifics, but Tulsi Gabbard was being pushed by somebody mm-hmm. in one of the debates and like like she knows her stuff. Like yeah. she knows who's who over there. Mm-hmm. And it was clear the person pushing her like had no clue. Like yeah. it, he had stepped in it pretty quick. I forget who it was. It may have been Buddha Judge, maybe. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> now. That would be funny because he was the other military person up there. It may not have been him. I, I don't remember. But it was it was a funny back and forth. But it just mm-hmm. goes to show you, even these people that are in some of these positions, they don't know. Yeah. I mean, she's not great on the war stuff, but at least she's against, you know, she's all for fighting the war against Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Um, and she's absolutely against fighting the war for Al-Qaeda that we're also doing. <laughs> right. Um, of course, you know, the biggest example is the Syria-Iraq thing. Yeah. Um, the uh, Seymour Hersh wrote that article about the, um, the redirection, uh, where after we had taken down the Sunni government in Iraq um, and the Shiites took over, and then we were like, oh, we just fought this whole war for Iran, as it turns out. We just gave Iran all the influence in, in Iraq. Yeah. Um, well, we can't go back into Iraq and fight the same war, but on the other side this time. Right. So, And we don't want to go actually fight Iran in Iran, because that's a for real war. So yeah. we'll, we'll fight the um, Shiites in Syria instead, and we'll back the Sunni, the, the moderate, the Sunni moderate rebels that you know turned out to be uh, al-Nusra and... Um, and various forms of Al Qaeda in Syria, yeah. um, and uh, and then there were the stories where um, the uh, you know the Shiites would or the the Sunnis um, would go fight against the Americans on the Iraqi side of the border, <laughs> and then they would cross over into Syria and get weapons and money from the Americans in Syria to take back to across the back. border in Iraq and fight the Americans again. I mean, it's, uh, just can't make this stuff up, man. It's no. insane. And no. it just, it goes to my whole point is like, we don't know what we're doing over there. We just need to get out. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they've been fighting over there since the beginning of time. They'll fight over there till the end of time. Let them do their thing. Like yeah. we don't need to be in the middle of it. There's nothing we get. We get nothing from this. 
Not on the whole, not in the aggregate. That's certainly true. Yeah. There's plenty of people that get quite a bit out well, of there's, stuff. Which is the whole reason that we're there. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that it's really a mistake, honestly. I think that yeah. what we have done quite intentionally is just create chaos over yeah. there and so that we can sell more weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's, I mean, there is a subset of the American population that is, uh, that this is a, a wonderful wonderful thing <laughs> yeah. where they're earning quite a bit of money off of it, um, selling weapons to moderate um, rebels yeah. that turn out to be terrorists, um, selling uh, weapons to our uh, allies in Saudi Arabia who actually sent all the guys who executed 9-11, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So we're, you know, we know we're on the right side of history. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a ridiculous thing, and and actually that's something that I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit is, you know, I we've heard from people that listen to the podcast that like there's I mean there's some people that are really interested in the foreign policy stuff, but we've heard from more people I would say that are just like wow well, you know it's so far away it doesn't really affect me yeah and. I, I, like I keep trying to make the case that it absolutely does. It's probably the the single most important policy thing that's affecting your day to day life, yeah. um, in like in a fairly direct way. Yeah. Um, well, and it's becoming more direct. Like as oh, the, yeah. as this goes on longer. So yeah, like, and in that's 2001, kind of what I to point out. 2002, like the early mm-hmm. days, of all of this. Yeah, it was all over there, and it's not mm-hmm. really affecting. But now you've got all of these soldiers coming home. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these. There's there's a lot to this now like it's not like it was 20 years ago you yeah know? and it like pains me to even say that this has been going on for 20 years yeah well at it, least at the level that it, that that we're discussing mm-hmm. i mean this has been going on forever but yeah at the most basic level and so there's so much that affects you the monetary policy as we talked about on the was last, the last podcast. podcast yeah, yeah. yeah. um is is created it's done in this way in order to continue supporting the wars yeah um th- and that is inflating away the value of your dollar um driving prices of of uh you know consumer goods up while you're complaining about your wages stagnating yeah. um it's putting money into the pockets of the banks and these uh government contract uh go- government contractors um, that a lot of the work for the war stuff is on a cost plus basis. Yeah. So, you know, they negotiate the contract. It's not like, well, we can do it for this and it's a low bid and, um, and that's what you get paid. I mean, there are contracts like that, but there's, you know, like a lot of the big war supporting contracts are cost plus. So they bid at a level that it'll end up costing three or four times that much and <laughs> they still get a, a built in profit yeah, off of right. your money. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. The, like everything that the government spends, it had to take from you first. Yep. Um, in in one form or another. <laughs> yeah, inflation is one of those forms. Obviously, yeah. direct taxes. Yeah. Um, and then the borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. You'll feel that eventually. Oh yeah, that's coming. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't listen to the modern monetary theorists. Remember, we got the militaristic monetary <laughs> theory that we're yeah we're we're the, on the, now. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I'm hoping that to take advantage of like what's going on in the U S right now, some of these things that are going on to try and point out to people how important that foreign policy stuff is to your day to day life. People have been rioting for a year about the militarization of the police. Yeah. You know why they have all that equipment? (laughs) Yeah. Cause they brought it back from, uh, which that's something that scares me as far as if we do pull back from these wars, Mm -hmm. like that means all of those soldiers and all of that equipment Mm -hmm. are going to be here in the States. Yeah. Um, which ain't that, which means we're going to have another battle to fight here to get that stuff off of our streets. Mm. Oh, hell, we, we might just sell it off to, you know, all well, the a lot Arabs of that stuff and, they leave. I mean, a lot yeah. of that stuff ain't coming back, but a lot of it that will come back, you yeah. know. I mean, but that's part of the problem, obviously, is that, you know, it, the if the wars are there to feed, to privatize public funds by taking your money away and feed it into the military industrial complex, um, then uh, it it's advantageous for them to buy new equipment all the time. Yeah. And so what do they do with the old equipment? Well, they've sold it off and given it away to various uh, law enforcement agencies back here in the States. Yeah. Um, this and is all stuff they do not need. Yeah. And you're talking about soldiers coming back. That's another thing yeah. um, is that, you know, there are soldiers coming back here and they're not really qualified for anything but shooting people. Yeah. Yeah. And what do they do? They become cops. Yeah. 
You know, um, I mean, and I, like I say, I want the best for these guys. Trust me. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. these are these are important people, but putting them in the uniform here in the U.S. ain't it. Yeah. And and I'll be honest, I, I'm I, I don't have statistics to back this up, but I'm pretty sure the guys that were actually in combat overseas that come yeah. back here and, and are cops yeah. are probably more disciplined. They you know, they're, they're probably good stats. I, I wouldn't surprise me if that was the case, yeah. even though I kind of j- um, did just say the opposite. But it, yeah, but there's the like it feeds into this mentality of the police force of being, you know, that they they want to go around and play Green Beret. Yeah. Um, you know, particularly the guys that didn't actually go over there and serve or went over there and didn't serve in any kind of combat role and they come yeah. back here and they're going to get some they're here. They're going to get, yeah, right. Um, you know, I, I think that that's a significant problem. But now, uh, you can look at since January, well, uh, since early January, really, um, but definitely since January 6th, uh, how they've militarized Washington, D.C. Yeah, and there's no... Like, the pl- war is is literally coming home, and it's, it's right out there for everybody to well, see. Well, and something for people to kind of consider. So we've done some crazy stuff in these countries as far as, like, rolling in with an army and, like, mm-hmm. making these people live under some harsh living conditions just Mm -hmm. by just by having the military our military by the way Mm -hmm. marching up and down their streets um the people in charge in congress and these other places they've had no problem doing that in other countries Mm -hmm. don't think for a minute that they won't get comfortable doing that here yeah um i mean they they've had no problem doing this in iraq and afghanistan and all of these other places there's no reason to believe that they won't come here and do the same thing yeah, absolutely. I, I agree a hundred percent. And and that's why I think now's the right time to try and point out yeah. this stuff to people. And if you look over the last week, uh there's been a couple of um a, a couple of incidents uh involving public figures where the military has made a strong, very public stance. Yes. Um political stance, I would say, even though they're not supposed to. They're you know. Yeah. Um the the, uh, the biggest one I guess is the uh the Tucker Carlson yeah. thing. So I saw that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they, from, from military controlled p- social media accounts, there were attacks on Tucker Carlson for m- making the statements that he made, which really weren't that big a yeah. deal. I mean, I mean they were kind of pe- stupid, honestly. Well, I, I don't say, think that, but people but, may not know. Um, I, so, and I didn't see the clip, so I just kind of got some of this secondhand. But it's out there that Tucker, Tucker. So I guess the military, one of the branches, has got pregnancy fatigues. Yeah, or they have uh, flight suits for flight pregnant suits. women. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah, and um, and so Tucker made some comments about it. And I like I say, the the comments that he made are really neither here nor there. He can say whatever mm-hmm. he wants; it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but. What's important is how the military reacted to that. Mm-hmm. And with, like you say, with some of the statements they made on their social media accounts about it. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just not a place for them to dive in, like, I think. I yeah, mean, well, the I, I think the most, well, let me bring up the other big example that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, is that Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, made some comments about, well, she's she's been wanting them to withdraw the National Guard from um, the U S capital. Yeah. And, uh, she made some comment at, um, at CPAC, I think, or something about, uh, you know, uh, that suggested that she thought Guam was a foreign country. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Frankly, it, it kind of <laughs> is. I mean, it is, a, it is technically a U.S. territory. Yeah. Um, but, but it ain't like it is over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they certainly have their own independent history and culture. Yeah. Essentially we're occupying this place not <laughs> right but whatever anyway gotta have the empire yeah yeah i mean they don't it's not like they don't get a vote over here they yeah, don't exactly they they don't have representation in yeah. congress or in um in the uh presidential elections or anything so there you go um so is it really you know part of the united <laughs> states I, yeah. I mean in the same way that puerto rico is yeah but i don't know if you've ever been to puerto rico but it is not like the united <laughs> states well is. i wouldn't so, expect it to I be i mean <laughs> so anyway um it, as a response to this apparently and led by uh, some democratic um representative or senator i, I don't remember um they had 20 national guardsmen from guam uh like march up to her office 
Oh, really? Uh, now, she wasn't there at the time. Yeah. And and afterwards, they said, well, they weren't trying to make any kind of political statement. I'm like, what do you call it? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you... what, kind of, what other kind of statement was it? You yeah, know, right? I mean, I think it was pretty clearly a political statement. Yeah. And um, and the, that's not a part of the military. That's not what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And the main thing is that especially all these people criticizing Tucker Carlson about, you know, what does he know? And he hadn't been in the military. So because that, that was the big yeah, thing. That, right? was, that was the thing that got under my skin the most was yeah. that that was the reference they kept making is like he can't not tell they didn't come out and blatantly say he can't have his opinion but basically they were saying his opinion doesn't matter because he's not he that hasn't served yeah and um, I'm sorry that's garbage like, that, that's absolutely garbage because our constitution was set up very explicitly to give civilian control of the military yeah yeah I mean we want civilians to be in control of the military as I mean we don't the the whole idea that that I don't know. I just feel like the military will get out of control very quickly and already has because of lack of civilian control. Mm -hmm. And that's the point that I'm trying to, that, that I hope that we're making here is that this, the military already has gotten out of control and it, uh, it is already showing that it has a clear impact on um, the civilian government and that it has a clear impact on the policies that direct it. Yeah. Um, and that's not the way it was supposed to be. No. And the the more power that the military has in the government of this country, like the more authoritarian it is. Exactly. Um, and that this is a this is a danger. And by the sign. way, this is all supported by the military. Like if the people get out of hand, the military is the one who's going to bring things back in. Yeah, that's also true. Like. You know, I mean, I'm not saying we're heading towards that, but I'm just saying, like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, this is all by the threat of a gun, and yeah. a gun's held by the military yeah. and your police. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Uh, I mean, well, you know, the military is the government killing force, and the police are this government kidnapping force, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, those are the those are the two people that have that power. <laughs> and I don't mean to offend people by that. It's not that I don't have any respect for people that have that are, have served in the military or oh. or law enforcement. I, my father was a career law enforcement yeah. officer. I have. A, you know, a rich family history of military service. That, and I tried to say my too. family and I'm, um, I, I have nothing but respect for people who do that job. Mm -hmm. Um, and even, even in situations where I disagree with what they're doing, I'm not trying to cr criticize anybody that's been in the military or served. Mm -hmm. My criticism comes from the, other side from the government side the fact that they shouldn't have been there in the first place like oh, i have no problems criticizing people specific people that have served well, i I, yeah. well, I i don't I, you know i don't you're talking about I say like high ranking the government, well them too but i mean no i you know yeah. um if i'm aware of uh of specific soldiers that have been involved in various war crimes and so well, forth. That's I'm, different. I'm absolutely, well, that's different. You know, oh. I have no problems um, criticizing well, yeah. them for that. And truthfully, I mean, like I realize that you kind of sell your soul over to the country when you, you know, when you um, sign up for the military. But the, the truth is that if you see what's going on around you and if you don't agree with it in the military, you just need to take your licks and step back Yeah. and say, look, I, this is, this yeah. isn't right. This is immoral or whatever, and and well, I agree. And I think that most people did sign up thinking that they were they were going to defend this country and serve their country. And what they're doing is and they're serving special otherwise. interests overseas. Well, and I think a lot of a lot of military people have learned otherwise. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the reason like Ron Paul's campaign in 2012 got so much military support. Yeah. Like, I mean, there was a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, people who've served know, kind of know what's going on over there in a way that we don't. Yeah. I mean, and one of the things there was the general or I don't know, he may not have been a general high ranking guy that, that posted in his uniform in his, military office um a statement about tucker and about yeah. you know how he while well, he's entitled to his opinion you know he didn't serve just be aware that this is media drama or whatever i don't i can't yeah, remember exactly yeah. what, that's what exactly he what he said um, media drama is what he called it yeah but you know he says okay so fine L let's just take it at that all right the, yeah. the you know the people that, that can have an opinion about what the military is doing are the people that served in the military yeah. Well, there's a super majority of people that served in Iraq that said that, that, that we shouldn't be there and we shouldn't have gone there in the first place. Yeah. Same thing with Afghanistan. Yeah. Those are people who are actually there and they're opposed to these wars. Yeah. So why aren't we listening to them about that? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even beyond the military thing, you talk, uh, we've been really trying to push this over this last year of 
year plus of COVID stuff um, about how your rights are yours. They're not given to you by the government. And if you want them, you better exercise them. Like yeah. you have to take them. Oh, absolutely. And, um, there was a, you know, part of that Biden speech, which I couldn't even get through, honestly, but, <laughs> yeah, um, I couldn't either. you know, he was talking about, uh, you know, if we're all good little boys and girls and do what we're told, then, um, you know, maybe they'll let us celebrate independence day. And I think that if we need their permission to celebrate independence day, that we don't need an independence day. <laughs> Like yeah. we might've missed out on, on that. Like if you need permission, then it's, then we have nothing to celebrate anyway. What, what are you looking uh, for? I was looking for a Dave Smith tweet um, and where he talked about exactly that. Yeah. But the, but the part that I got a kick out of was at the end. So it was like, yeah, you know, um, you should, that we should absolutely celebrate independence day. I can't find it. Mm -hmm. um, but and we should treat every day like it's Independence Day. Yeah. Like, and that was the one that, that was kind of the kicker that got me. Like, mm -hmm. hell yeah. Like, every day is Independence Day. Like, mm -hmm. we're Americans. Like, we're not supposed to, like, listen. Our government isn't supposed to tell us to stay in our homes and let's just do it. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's not how this works. We are not all under house arrest. They cannot do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and... You know, we like we've said over and over again, if you want to make sure that you keep these rights... You just need to exercise them. Oh, absolutely. If you need permission, it's not a right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You've already given it up. Yep. Yep. It's too late. Um, and yeah, that part of that speech really got me. Like, so I did listen to that speech and that he talked about that. I think that was towards the end and mm -hmm. like it got my blood riled up. The, the yeah. fact that he would even come out and suggest that, oh yeah, we'll let you, because that's basically what he said is, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I'm not going to make you any promise. It sounded like my parents, I'm not <laughs> going to make you any promises, but if you're really good, we'll let you have some small gatherings over Independence Day. Yeah. It's like, yeah. like, and, and I'm sitting here going, y'all haven't been having small gatherings? Like, I mean. It's like we're waiting to be paroled yeah right yeah. no way no way man not in this country i'm sorry yeah yeah absolutely my favorite independence day of all time by the way still yeah um is the one where i was in santiago chile oh really yeah, yeah. I, like i had such a good time at that independence day like yeah. you know there were a half a dozen or so americans maybe maybe even maybe even a dozen uh, yeah. americans uh, there was a party with you know 30 some people yeah. um that maybe 10 of them were Americans and there were a bunch of Australians and Germans and Brazilians and like people from all over the place. And it was a hell of a party. Like yeah. it was a great time. Like yeah. I had a great time. So they were celebrating it up too. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I don't cause there was a party, they, right? They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, I think my brother did make a toast at one point to manifest destiny, which I thought was maybe like in poor taste, but, um, <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a, you know, yeah. It was, it was definitely, it was definitely things were nice and, and felt very free down there. Yeah. And then the following weekend, we went to uh, the coast in Chile mm -hmm. and uh, we went down and partied on the beach with some, some locals. And they said that if the cops come, we're all, we're all tourists. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah, if the cops come, we're all tourists. Like we're not really supposed to go down there and party, but they let tourists but, go. But the tourists, so. they're not going to let. Yeah, they're not going to do anything. <laughs> so the if the cops come. We are all tourists, yeah. <laughs> which that's kind of yeah. That's so not it wasn't quite as free a country as it felt like on. I was going to say yeah, yeah. That's and that's not what we want this country to become. No, know? no. Yeah, I, right. But I think it already has in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, it has. Um, yeah. And uh, so I mean, I hope you know. I just hope that people stand up for for their own freedom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it's not so, going to be given back to you. No, no. That's and and I've I've know I've mentioned it before, but with these lockdowns and particularly with the mask thing, like I mean, the only way we're going to get out of this is to like disobey. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I hate that it has to be that way, but it mm -hmm. does. Yeah. Like I mean, you're, we're not going to get through this kindly, mm -hmm. because I mean they've already said like with the vaccine, you still got to wear the mask. And in fact, now they want you to wear two, even if you got the vaccine. Yeah. And like, science is not on their side, even though they keep saying we've got to follow the science. Yeah. Like no, so, I, I suggest that you follow the science. Yeah. <laughs> and don't bother wearing masks because yeah. they're ineffective. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's time. Like, we've, we've done this long mm -hmm. enough. They've had a year of this. Yeah. Like, well, and they say, they keep telling us, well, if, you know, if we could just get everybody to comply, like in yeah. what, like May or something of last year, they had a couple of, uh, of surveys that said that, that in the U.S. they were like 97 or 98% compliant of yeah. mask use. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's still here. And at that time, 
it was people were pretty compliant, even mm-hmm. in areas like where I'm at, where they're not now. Yeah, because um, they scared the hell out of us, and ev- none of us knew what was going on. Yeah, really. and and people were doing it, and it, there's there's no evidence to say that it helped at all. So, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, come still on, here. guys. Yeah. So the fact that it's still here should be evidence enough that masks don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Staying at home doesn't do it. No. Nope. Lockdowns don't do it. No gatherings doesn't do it. None. Yeah. Viruses travel through populations. It's, yeah. it's just a just the it's nature just the way of it the works. Things. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, what uh, there was something else you wanted to talk about? We kind of yeah. just like really wandered there a bit. But <laughs> that's all right. This is definitely a wandering podcast tonight. <laughs> we didn't really come in with a hard agenda tonight. Normally, yeah. Mike's got a bunch of notes, and I at least have a couple of things I want to say. And we didn't have any of that tonight. <laughs> yeah, I have two lines on a notepad about who uh, uh, Tucker Carlson and Marjorie Taylor Greene is what it says. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. And the, <laughs> believe me, he normally has a page, guys. So yeah, we're we're kind of it's one of those nights. No, the only thing I kind of oh, did I just kick you? Yes, you did. Um, the only thing that I had really had was I just wanted to kind of throw the idea out there that especially with the LP convention coming up this weekend. Um, something that's been kind of just on my mind that as the weeks went along is we need to to really push to try to get a state to have a libertarian governor mm-hmm. because I think if that's if that's something we can do, a governor actually has a lot of power if they exercise it properly, and I don't think that they currently are, but I mean the states were supposed to be independent sovereigns. And I think if you had a governor that just said, okay, like I'm going to, I'm going to, and maybe not push back on everything, but pick some stuff and really push back on it. And yeah. I know you had mentioned like the gun thing the other day. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I mean, there are things going on in various states. There's the protect, you know, the second amendment protection acts that are going on in various states. That, yeah. And, um, there's, uh, of course the protect the guard stuff, which I'm yeah, a big that's advocate a of. Big one, I think. Um, so and uh, so for people that are, are unaware, the Protect the Guard uh, legislation that's been introduced in a bunch of mostly red states, yeah, um, is uh, essentially saying that the because the National Guard is belongs to the state, yeah, um, the federal government can call it up, call them up when necessary uh, during war, yeah. but we haven't declared war since World War II, yeah, and so the Protect the Guard stuff says essentially that the states won't. The that particular state, I mean, because yeah. it's independent for each state. Absolutely, um, that that particular state won't allow their national guard to go serve for the U.S. military uh, unless there's a declaration of war. Yeah. Um, it would either leave the the guards at home, and you know, just as a, a real uh, stark example, um, one of the big problems in Katrina <laughs> was that the Louisiana National Guard was deployed. Yeah, I remember that. I forgot about that. That's yeah. true. Um, so they didn't have a National Guard that they could call out to help rescue people in Katrina and, because they were they were deployed Yeah, in, uh, in, in an undeclared war. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it does have a real impact, or it can it have can. a real impact. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm a big advocate of that legislation. It would... It would either keep your guards at home where they should be yeah. anyway, um, or it would force the Congress to actually sit down and, and declare a vote. Yeah, which, by the way, they know they can't get through Congress. There's no mm-hmm. way they could pass, the, or at least in these current wars that we're mm-hmm. in, get that through Congress. I yeah. mean, I mean, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that all the congressmen are aware of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that. I think that what. I think that they probably would pass a declaration of war, and then there would be a whole lot of congressmen that lost their seats. Well, yeah, that may be true. Now, that may be true. You may be right about that. There would be repercussions if they did. Yeah. I'll put it that way. Um, but I think— I think they're di- so disconnected from their constituents at this point that I— It's I, possible because I, the 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 amount, there's plenty—the the majority of the country is anti-war. Um, and I, I think that you start— like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like when, if, if it was out there in front of people that obviously, mm-hmm. like there would be serious repercussions as far as at the ballot box for that. Yeah, I think you're right. So. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, and then the Second Amendment protections um, are just trying to keep the federal government out of uh, private sales within states. Yeah. Because um, as it stands right now, if you are a private uh, gun owner, um, 
you and I as private gun owners can sell our guns back and forth to each other because we both live in Alabama all we want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Alabama doesn't require any kind of declarations about that kind of thing. Yeah. And the federal government can't step in because of the uh, interstate commerce clause. They can't, yeah. I, I should say, I should say it properly. Um, they can't use the interstate commerce clause as an excuse to get involved yeah. um, with that sale. Um, now, as it stands, if you lived in Florida, though, and I wanted to sell you a gun, um, we would have to contact a, uh, a federal firearms license dealer yep. and have the transfer done through them. Yeah. Um, and that's true all over the country. Yeah. So uh, interstate sales. I didn't um, actually know that till recently. Well, I knew really? you had to, like, if you bought guns offline, that mm -hmm. you had to have them shipped to an FFL. Like, I knew that. Yeah. But I didn't realize I couldn't just drive, till recently, drive to Mississippi and go and to a pawn a shop gun. and yeah. buy a gun. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can. I can drive to Mississippi and, and buy a gun. But then mm -hmm. it has to be shipped to Alabama to FFL mm -hmm. and I have to buy it through the FFL. Right. Um, which is crazy. Like, I mean, that's, I didn't know that till mm -hmm. like, say, recently. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they are pushing some gun control legislation. I, I, I'm pretty confident it's not going to pass uh, yeah. through Congress, but they are pushing some gun legislation that would change that. Yeah. Um, that would make it so that you had to declare uh, Every inter sale. interstate sales. Yeah, yeah. Private sales would still have to be done through an FLL because it would require background checks and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, now, like so many things, and this is where, you know, the problem is where the rubber meets the road, right? Yeah. Um, the, uh, like, just like immigration laws and, and so forth, the, the problem is, like, how do you enforce this? Yeah. So in order to enforce that kind of sale, you have to have a registry, right? Yeah. Like, is there any other way to there's, know if people, if private sales are going on within a state? Yeah. If well, you don't have a firearms registry where every firearm is known who the owner is and so forth? Exactly. And that's that's something I'm telling you, we don't want that. Like that's a dangerous road right there. No, yeah, you're um, absolutely right. That's 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 scary to me at least. As somebody that buys, I buys a lot of guns. I don't really mm -hmm. sell a lot, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but the the Second Amendment protection stuff uh, that's that some states have passed uh, essentially says that any um, that they will ignore any federal firearms register. Our, our federal firearms regulations that aren't within their um, purview under the Constitution. Yeah. Which so should be almost all everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it should be everything. Yeah. That should run the gambit right there. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, states are doing things like that. Um, I've advocated for a long time that um, the taxes be run through the state. Yeah. Uh, well, my big advocacy is that there be no taxes, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but if we're going to have them... <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I would like to see a state take control of the federal taxes uh, paid by their citizens and yeah. say, okay, you calculate your taxes, you send them to the state, the state will send them as a bulk sum to the government with no additional information. Yeah. Um, and so if the government thinks that we're short, they can't go after an individual citizen. Yeah. They have to come back to the state. I think that's an amazing idea. Yeah. Like, I, I can't say how much I love that idea. And I think that's something that could get a lot of support within a state. Like, mm -hmm. I think if you had a governor or had a candidate mm -hmm. um, for governor in Alabama make that one of their planks, I think they would... May, I think they yeah. would get a lot of support. I mean, there's challenges in making that actually work. Uh, oh, I'm sure there but, is. But w if we're talking about campaign slogans, well, yeah, you don't. You don't <laughs> you're right. <laughs> how, how silly <laughs> that I think that anything you say in a campaign, you have to have to actually be able to yeah. do. Um, but uh, you're right. I'm just saying. Like, I think you could get a lot of support, and then. I mean, if maybe that was the problem with my campaign. Is that <laughs> right. I was only promoting things that I thought I could actually do. Yeah, right. Uh, exactly. Man, you got to learn how this game's played. Man. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, if you did make that a big uh, part of your campaign and did win, mm -hmm. I mean, you'd have some leverage to make that happen. Yeah. I mean, you would have some capital there to because mm -hmm. I mean, like I say, if that was your big thing and you won the election, like I mean, you're you've got people got to kind of move around to let you do it. Yeah. Well, so, to some degree. To some degree. I, there's logistical issues, though. I mean, I'm sure there is. Like, so how do you? Well, there's no reason to get into all that. But like, somebody yeah, can work the details there's, out. There's later. hurdles there for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but yeah, stuff like that. I think I think if you took a few of these, what I don't know, I wouldn't call them extreme, but many would call extreme positions as like like what we just talked about, and really kind of built a campaign around it. I think you could do something. I think you could really. 
I think there's I think there's a chance you could at least in some of these states like I think we talked about is it New Hampshire that has the Free State Project? Yeah, um, the Free State Project is uh, is moving libertarians over time to New Hampshire to yeah. specific parts of New Hampshire. Yeah, to try and win um, state house seats and things like that. Yeah, um, I, I think there's I think there's a real future there, and I think. I, w- I would like to see the National Libertarian Party focus more on that type of stuff mm-hmm. and less so on the the presidential campaign because the presidential campaign is nothing but a speaking tour anyway, and it's not went well the past few times. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. if we focus some of those resources on the governorship, like I think you could you want to talk about a campaign like a, a tour, like if you mm-hmm. won one of these governorships, like mm-hmm. they would get some attention. Yeah, that's true. Um, now the the important thing about supporting like the important thing about supporting national candidates as the Libertarian Party though is that it does like that's that's going to give you national media exposure, yeah. um, which while well, winning a governorship certainly would as well. Yeah. Um, but that that's a it's a campaign that everybody pays attention to it every is. four years. And I'm not saying not to run anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, man, like there's, I'm, I don't know what kind of resources are put towards that. But if you move some into like finding a serious state that we could make some hay in, yeah. I'm just saying, I think it would be a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that there's there are some states or at least some areas of some states, including this one, where with yeah. the right message, a libertarian could do really well. Yeah. Um, you know, there's this is a, uh, you know, across the South generally, I think, and, and especially places like the heart of Dixie where we are. Yeah. Um, there is a, a strong independent streak, uh, you know, keep the government out of my business Absolutely. Feeling like kind of all over. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But there's some places where that's real strong in this state. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and those people vote, man. Mm-hmm, that's I true. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, and they're paying attention. Like, I think I think there could be some fun to be had there. Um, I'd like to see, like I say, I don't... There is a resource problem, though, also with the Libertarian Party. I mean, yeah. there's just not a lot of money. I, that's there's true. nowhere close to the kind of money that is fed into the Republican and Democrat parties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know how it compares to things like the Green Party and other like you know smaller third party. Um, yeah. I mean, we're the, still the biggest third party. You know. Yeah, in membership, but I don't know if that translates translates into to dollars. money. Yeah. Um, although there are quite a few successful libertarians too. Yeah. So maybe it does. I'm not. I just don't know. Yeah. Like I haven't been close enough to it to. To to watch, numbers, yeah, yeah, to watch LP finances. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this coming from our county treasurer. <laughs> yeah, I think I forgot to pay our PO box too. I gotta go fix that. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. the one the one expense we have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I've been trying to get that one off the books for years, but I just haven't succeeded. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Turns out we have to receive mail somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Although we don't receive, we only receive mail from the last person that owned the box. <laughs> That's uh, even more we've had that, We've had that box for five years, and uh, oh. like we only receive mail from the last person that owned the box. Oh. Well, maybe we don't need that. Then. Except when they bill me every year. Yeah, We'll have to put it up to a vote at the next meeting. <laughs> I've thought about using it as my own personal P.O. box for various things, you know, just, yeah. or, or, or using it as the Liberty Mike's P.O. box if we wanted to start <laughs> yeah. taking donations that way. Like, I hate to go out and set up an, another P.O. box when there's this P.O. box that's just really not being used. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's already being paid for. It's yeah. just like an empty. It's all for Liberty, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, we'll promote the Baldwin County Party from here. <laughs> right? If you're in Baldwin County, join the Libertarian Party. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. Absolutely. So, no, that's really all I had. I just, I think that's something for everybody to just kind of be thinking about, you know. And if there's anybody out there in Alabama that wants to run for governor, mm-hmm. like, I, I, like, I would support you. <laughs> like, I would, <laughs> at least libertarians, like, that, that would Don't take some of these. Don't speak Well, that would take some of these ideas and yeah. run with them, though, because I'm not... I'm just not built for that. Like I will I happily be a policy advisor. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I don't think I'm ever running for office again. But yeah, I will happily be a. Policy I haven't. Advisor. I haven't ran for office yet, and I may end up running for a small council seat somewhere or something down the line. I can write speeches and stuff too. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think I can run for governor. I just don't think I'm quite built for that. No, but, you, but you're, th- you're still thinking about doing city council. I am. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. I, I think that would be something I'd like to do, mm-hmm. and, and I think there's some. I think there's some openings there. Like I think that yeah. I, there's some campaigns I could actually win. I wouldn't want to run if I didn't think I could win. Yeah, 
Um, you know, one of the, I'm not sure about other states, but in Alabama, um, you can wield quite a bit of influence if you're on county commissions. Yeah. yeah. Um, county commission is a really, um, yeah. really powerful seat in Alabama. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I think that you could actually start being influential within the state and making some changes on a local level yeah. in, in a, in a county commission role. Yeah. Um, maybe now, something I explore. Cause I, like I say, I would like to run for something like that at some point. And, mm-hmm. and I'd like to run for something where I could like impact it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, you certainly have more impact I, I on would, county commission than you would on a city council. On city council yeah. And I, you get paid. Yeah, I would like to run for one of those and then dissolve the position. Like that's my dream. Yeah, well, but there's there's four other county commission or three yeah. other county. Well, county commission, commission wouldn't be one. I, I don't know. There was a guy in Florida that was running for tax collector, and his <laughs> campaign was to dissolve the position. Yeah, I was like, oh man, like that would be so cool. Like, yeah, oh, I'd love to do that. Yeah. Well, see, that's why the libertarians don't get enough uh, attention is because that's that's you know like a real libertarian. That's exactly what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to win this role in government so I can dissolve this government. <laughs> yes. Um, and people don't take that very seriously. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I think I think there's enough. I think you could make do it, man. I think yeah. people might take it seriously. I mean, wasn't it... Um, how, what was the guy that... Uh, that ran for the uh, LP presidential nomination that you liked so much. Oh, um, Adam ran Kokesh. On ex- yeah, Adam Kokesh ran on yeah. exactly that position. Yeah, absolutely. My, my first act as president will be to, d- to dissolve the federal government. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and put together a commission to help take it apart. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he had my support. <laughs> uh, I, I will immediately resign the position of president and accept only the lesser role of of uh, overseer of the dissolution of the federal government or whatever. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. And I'm what just it's saying, I think like. you get that on the national campaign. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of people that's not gonna take it seriously. But yeah. after the p- past couple of presidents, I mean, we've done had Trump and now we got Biden. I yeah. think a lot more people are like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> man. Like maybe this guy's on to something. <laughs> yeah. Why do we keep giving these people these this all this power? Exactly. Um. Well, I so I was talking with a friend at work and um we were discussing how difficult it is to take that power away. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of the problems that we complain about, and I keep, like the last time I said, like take that extra step, you know, and and understand that it's really the fact that the government has all this power to do all this stuff that's the real problem. Absolutely. It's not the corporation that's the problem, it's the fact that the government can make you use that corporation. Yeah. Or can prevent other corporations from competing with that corporation. Coming in, yeah. Or whatever it happens to be. Or they can like literally take your money and taxes and give it to that corporation. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, but the problem lies at, at the government level uh, because otherwise all, all your other, all your other relationships essentially are voluntary relationships. Yeah. Like your business relationships, except when the government's involved are voluntary relationships. The only relationship that you have with any kind of organization that isn't a voluntary relationship at all is the government. Yep. Every time. Um, so, you know, if you could just get rid of that and, and his retort every time, and it's a good one is, well, you can't, you can't wrest that power away from them. Yeah. Like, how do you take it away? Yeah. You know, how do you put the genie back in the bottle or the toothpaste back in the it's true. squeezy it's, thingy, it's whatever a, you call well, it? Well, and that's the reason that the progressives always win mm-hmm. is because they're always, that it's always moving further towards bigger and bigger government. And that's the reason the government's as big as it is now. Yeah. Is it never gets smaller. Yeah. Like you don't you don't pass the stuff and then it go away mm-hmm. later on. And the incredible thing to me is because people don't take that last step and realize that the government was the problem to begin with, yeah. is that the government still it, it, it keeps expanding by asking for your support to expand the government to solve a problem that the government already created. That they created, yeah. You know, Every, so they create absolutely. a problem and then you have to make them bigger to solve that problem and it just creates more problems. And then it's the, just a spiral. It's, yeah, it's unreal. Um, and, and we need more people running for positions to dissolve them. Mm-hmm. I think that's the answer, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I so. think you're right. I, I have, um, I mean, you know, one of our principles here is self-government. Yeah. Like our belief is that we have this whole thing upside down yep. um, that really in, 
you know, and I've said so many times, probably so many times on this podcast, but there, there's always some new people. So, you know, yeah. um, that I think that the role of government at every level is to protect you from the level of government above it. Yeah. So your city government needs to protect you from the county and the county government needs to protect you from the state and the state government needs to protect you from the feds. Absolutely. And that's a good way to think about it. I mean, that's, and you mm-hmm. really think like, I mean, that's kind of what the constitution was built around. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was, it was set up to do that. And, and we've just, but it, it really is sad. Like, so the constitution is a great document and I love it to death. And it's just sad that it's, it's a joke now. Like yeah. nobody takes that document serious. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just you, you, you bring now. it up and, and it's, it's a joke and it's, it sucks. It's just a symbol, but it doesn't have any real power. It doesn't power. have any real power anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a lot of the problems, which is the reason I've kind of became an anarchist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, it, it's true. It like, took two years of this podcast, but here yeah, we are. Yeah. Here we are, man. Like it's, it's the truth, man. Okay. Like I'm there, man. Like, and, and, but that is why is because that it, it's just not, it's, it doesn't work. Like we've, we've ran the experiment and it failed. Like that's where I'm at. So. Well, I want to end on that. That's a big hooray. Okay. <laughs> All right. We finally converted Liberty Larry. Yeah. To actually being Liberty Larry. Um, <laughs> well, I've always been Liberty, but it's, <laughs> I would say it's the more extreme form now. <laughs> so. All right. Well, you have anything else that you want to add before we go? No, I think we, I think we, we done it up. So I'm excited about this weekend. Yeah. I hope to see, I hope we have some people from that, some listeners out there. Like, yeah. You know, come and say hello. Yeah. Uh, you usually have some kind of name tag. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have my Liberty Mike shirt on maybe. Oh, I need to. That reminds me, I need to do some laundry. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah, so we'll be back in a, a week, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I feel like I have to hedge every time now. <laughs> right. um, well, we may be back so before bad at a this. week. Well, I guess we'll definitely be back in a week because we're going to do something while we're up there. If we either yeah. interviews or a podcast or something, we may not get it put up till we get back in town. But yeah. Well, we definitely won't because um, you you my yeah my good next. software is on the desktop and I'm not carrying that yeah. up there. So we'll have something up next week. I mean, I have like a simple audio editor on on the uh, laptop on the laptop, but yeah, yeah. no, my good stuff's my yeah. good stuff. So here. we'll have something up next week. <clears throat> yeah, um, hopefully we get uh, some good interviews or at least one good interview. Um, I mean. You know, if it comes down to it, then I'll just interview Liberty Larry about his final <laughs> conversion to anarchism. About my conversion. <laughs> um, uh. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so, in the meantime, though, uh, follow us on Facebook. Where, where, where all are we? With yeah, Facebook, Facebook. YouTube. Yeah, you can subscribe on YouTube, Podbean, and iTunes. Yep. Um, any or all. All. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. I don't I don't think we're really anywhere else. There's, of course, the webpage, the libertybike.com. Yeah. Um, we post everything there. I need to do some updates and, like, move the articles to their own page because they've, like, fallen way back because I haven't uh, written anything in a while. Because you haven't written anything lately. Um, yeah. It's yeah. been a while. Uh, the last uh, article I wrote was more than a year ago, actually, the wow. one that was on anti-war um, yeah. about the Soleimani uh, assassination. Oh, yeah. That was the last one I wrote. That's, that's been the minute, man. We gotta get you yeah, back into writing. Yeah. Well, I've had a, I've had a weird year. It's been a, it's been a rough go. I, <laughs> um, I get it. <laughs> I, but it's really my fault. Like, well, it happens. you know, you just gotta, you just gotta learn to like set some time aside to do those kind of things. And so, like, I've been really good recently about setting some time aside to read every day, yeah. and I need to set some time aside to write every day. Yeah. And and get that much less sleep. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, like and subscribe, um, share, and if you're up in Huntsville this weekend and you are around the Libertarian Convention, I don't remember where it is. Um, Huntsville. Somebody else is driving so that I can drink. And um, anyway, yeah, uh, come say hello. Absolutely. Uh, be happy to talk to you. Yep. Um, any positive criticism would be great. <laughs> yeah. um, and we'll be back when we're back, sooner or later. Yeah. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later.